Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an exponential Diophantine equation. This problem is from a book named Mathematical Olympiad Challenges by Razvan Gelka and Titu Andrescu. So we have 3 to the power x minus 2 to the power y is equal to 1. And the link for the book I'm going to share down in the description. Okay, so we're going to be finding integer solutions for this equation. How do you go about that? First, first of all, we're going to be looking for somewhat obvious solutions. For example, if x is equal to 1 and y is equal to 1, then we do get a solution because 3 minus 2 is equal to 1. So that means 1 comma 1 is a solution. Hopefully that was obvious. And then there's another solution. If you think about it, powers of 3 and powers of 2, we have 9 minus 8, which is also 1. So that means that if x is equal to 2 and y is equal to 3, we get 9 minus 8 is equal to 1, which means 2 comma 3 is another solution. Okay, great. So these are somewhat obvious solutions, hopefully. Now we're going to be looking for different values. Now notice that if y is greater than or equal to 2, then we're going to get something interesting. So we're kind of like looking at these two y values, 1 and 3. We didn't find anything for 2, but we can just kind of use 2 as our uh, lower bound. So here's, here's what happens. Let me write down 3 to the power x as 2 to the power y plus 1 first. Now, if y is greater than or equal to 2, now, why did I pick 2? Because first of all, we don't have that. And second, it's significant because if y is equal to 2, we get a 4 on the right hand side. So I'm going to be looking at this equation in mod 4. Okay, so what is 3 equivalent to in mod 4? We can basically say that 3 is equivalent to negative 1 mod 4, right? Because we can subtract 4 from 3. So if I replace uh, 3 with negative 1, I get negative 1 to the power x. And then that is going to be congruent to. Now, when y is 2 or greater than 2, then this expression here is going to be a multiple of 4, which means in mod 4, it's going to be 0, leaving us with a positive 1 on the right-hand side. So, in other words, mod 4, our expression is going to be congruent to 1. And what is that supposed to mean? You have a negative 1 as the base, and you're raising it to the power x. So x is going to be an integer here, and... In this case, we can safely say that x must be even, all right? So since x is even, I can write it as x equals 2z, where z is an integer greater than 1 because we already have the cases for less than or equal to 1 for z. Okay, so now since x can be written as 2z, we can just go ahead and substitute that into our equation here and see what happens from there. And that's going to be a good thing because now this we, this we have 3 to the power x is equal to 2 to the power y plus 1. And now what this gives me is if I replace x with 2z, then I get two, 3 to the power 2z is equal to 2 to the power y plus 1. Now this may not look significant, but if you think about subtracting one from both sides, it's going to be super duper helpful because on the left hand side, we are getting a perfect square. Why? Because this can be written as 3 to the power z squared minus 1 squared, which is a perfect square, and then it is equal to 2 to the power y. Now, the good thing about getting a perfect square, actually, that's super important because now you can factor it. And factoring definitely plays an important role in solving Diophantine equations. So I can basically write this as 3 to the power z plus 1 multiplied by 3 to the power z minus 1. And that is equal to a power of 2. Now, let's think about it for a minute. You have two terms on the left-hand side. They're both like one of them is one less than a power of 3 and the other one is one more than a power of 3. So these numbers are kind of like two apart, right? And their product is a power of 2. And obviously, both of these numbers have to be even, right? So I can safely say that 3 to the power z minus 1 needs to be an even number, right? Uh, 3 to the power z minus 1 is needs to be even. So what is that supposed to mean? Well, I can safely say that this can be written as 2m, where m is an integer. So let's go ahead and write it down and see what happens. 3 to the power z minus 1 is equal to 2m. From here, 3 to the power z becomes 2m plus 1, which means that 3 to the power z 
needs to be an odd number. Now, what is so significant about it is our original equation. If you remember, we had this equation, and then we replaced x with 2z. All right? So let's go ahead and do that. So we have 3 to the power 2z, in other words, right? And then we have equals 2 to the power y plus 1. All right. Now, I'm going to replace... 3 to the power z with 2m plus 1. So this can be written as 3 to the power z squared. Let me go ahead and write it that way first. And then I'm going to replace 3 to the power z with 2m plus 1. Let's go ahead and do that. This is 2m plus 1 squared, and that's equal to 2 to the power y plus 1. Now, let's go ahead and expand this. This gives us 4m squared plus 4m plus 1 is equal to 2 to the power y plus 1. Okay, go ahead and cancel out the 1 and factor the left-hand side. What do we get? We get 4m multiplied by m plus 1 is equal to 2 to the power y. Now, one thing to notice about this expression is, like, very important. We have a 4, which is a power of 2, but we also have the product of two consecutive integers, right? So m times m plus 1, think about something like this, like 2 times 3, 3 times 4, 4 times 5. If you multiply two consecutive integers, first of all, they're not going to have any common factors besides 1. Second, they'll pro their product will never be a power of 2. So when you multiply by 4, it's just not going to work, which means that this is a contradiction. So our assumption that, you know, uh, y is greater or equal to 2 doesn't give us anything, which means that we don't really have any solutions for y greater than or equal to 2. So let's go back here and see what happens. We said that if this is true, then the following holds, but unfortunately that doesn't really give us anything. We have 1, 1, and 2, 3 as our solution to this equation, which can be written as 3 to the power x minus 2 to the power y is equal to all right, so that brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.